There are people who I'm sure would not come in here. I've had people come over here and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late for the meeting. No taxi cab would take me over from Manhattan because they all said we're not going anywhere near the cemetery. I've had guys deliver things for an exhibition who wouldn't walk into this because of a, a fear of the spirits here. Greenwood Cemetery is in the heart of urban Brooklyn, 478 acres of rolling hills in Sunset Park, what's now called Greenwood Heights, and also Kensington. The cemetery in its earliest years really was an open house. And so the cemetery really became a great tourist attraction, one of the greatest tourist attractions in America. We have people who wrote from Europe and said, someday I'd like to visit America and see Niagara Falls and see Greenwood Cemetery. And so by the 1850s, half a million people a year are coming into the cemetery. By the 1970s, Unfortunately, the people running this place reversed the idea of the open house and decided to make this into much more of a fortress. And so it's not unusual for me to find out that somebody lives two blocks away, they've lived here for 20 years, and they never knew that the cemetery was open uh, and welcoming for visitors. The first burial is 1840. We are close to 560,000 permanent residents. There is a variety of burial here at the cemetery. It ranges from in-ground burial, which is the most common, to underground vaults. We also have hillside mausolea, and we also have freestanding tombs. There's always a lot of pressure opening these up on a tour. People waiting to climb in. The catacombs are at the very end of the hills. The catacombs date from the early 1850s, constructed as a sort of apartment house for above ground interment. So there are 30 vaults in there, each of which is owned by a family. The catacombs run back about 100, 150 feet into the hillside, and each of the vaults has a skylight above it. The catacombs are a middle-class option for people who wanted the luxury of above-ground interment without the expense of constructing something on your own. Probably the most prominent person in the catacombs is Ward McAllister, who in 19th century New York City was the arbiter of society. Well, Ward McAllister obviously had uh, pretensions of being very much a part of society, but he was not certainly as wealthy as the people who he advised and he dealt with. And so he would be, I think, quite chagrined to know that uh, the catacombs are now locked up and access is very limited there.
We are at the point now where we have just very limited uh, lots and graves available for sale. And so what is this place two generations out, three generations out? And so we are hoping to make it a historic park, a place that people can come in and just walk around on their own. I don't see this place as a place so much of death as a place of life and a story to be told. But you know, there are people who, you know, ooh, a cemetery. And then they'll come in here on a tour and say, wow, this was great. You know, who knew 